It's the NFL on EA Sports. And coming up, it'll be no hose barred between NFC North rivals. It's the Minnesota Vikings and the Green Bay Packers. Next on Madden NFL 23. This place first opened way back in 1957. We are inside legendary Lambeau Field here in Green Bay. Today, it's a black and blue matchup in the NFC North between the Minnesota Vikings and the Green Bay Packers. And a welcome in, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gauden, and Charles, so much gets made about offensive comparisons. Here's a matchup where the defenses may just take center stage. Yeah, we're usually talking about guys scoring touchdowns. How about the guys who prevent them and change the momentum of the game when they take the ball away? I love those ball hawks in the secondary. People after my own heart. Twenty-two men ready to do battle. It's time to dance. And off we go from Lambeau. Kene Duwagu now out of his end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Under center for the Vikings, out comes the former Michigan State Spartan and longtime veteran Kirk Cousins. Not bad for a fourth-round draft pick. Well over 100 career starts now. And the chemistry with his top targets, really on point. They spend a lot of time in practice and after practice making sure the routes are run well, and he knows exactly where they're going to be on the field. And when they get open, he delivers. Play action now, Cousins. And that's complete to K.J. Osborne. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. Just like that, it's a gain of 12 and a first down on their first play. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag. Because when you do, you just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. So from the 36 now, first and 10. To throw is Cousins. This goes out wide for Madison. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. I like it, I like it, I like it. Get everyone involved in the passing game, and you know you can create those great mismatches throwing it to your guys out of the backfield. And on the first drive, that can also help establish some rhythm, right? I think so. It gets everyone involved. They feel like they're part of it and really gets them amped up as they go forward. First carry now for Alexander Madison. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He winds up giving a yard back there, and now it's third and two. Partner, one thing I was lousy at growing up, track and field. I could never anticipate the start before a race, but how about that backer? He figured it out, jumped the count, and turned it into a really nice play for his defense. Cousins on third and two. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. 
And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers' 38-yard line. That good for 19 yards as they pick up the conversion on third. Another completion right there. And again, Charles, good time in the pocket. That offensive line on this opening drive been really solid. They've been more than solid. They've really tamped down the pass rush and kept him safe in the pocket, able to look around, find his target, and deliver. He's got to make sure he tells the offensive line in the huddle. Thanks, fellas. Let's keep it going. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 38. Throwing Cousins. And he wisely will throw that one away. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earn a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. They'll go Madison up the middle. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. That's a play to take note of there for the defense. I think in the future, if you're going to try and block him, maybe you get a guard to help double-team him and try and steer him out of the play. They should have done it on that snap. Here comes the seventh play of this opening drive. They've moved it well, but here's third down. Throwing his cousins. And the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Six-foot-four-inch Jordan Love taking the field for the first time. The 2020 first-round pick from Utah State set to lead Green Bay. And at the start of Jordan Love's NFL career, he had one of the best seats in the stadium watching Aaron Rodgers work. But now he's looking for more than that. Rocket arm, big play potential. And he wants to show this organization that he's capable of being a dependable starter for the foreseeable future. Love and the Packers now with a first and 10 at their own 14 yard line. They'll start the drive with a carry by Jones. And he'll be taken down at the 18. On the tackle that time, Dean Lowry. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Second down, another shot for Jones. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Love now. Looking middle, and that's complete. And he's going to have a Packers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Normally on third down and short yardage, you're thinking to throw to your tight end. It's just going to be a simple chain mover. But this time they let him roam down the field, and a nice dart picks up the first down and then some.
Now a first down carry by Jones. And the ball is out. Jones got hit and lost it. And they take over. They'll set up shot at the 46-yard line. Do you remember in preseason we were going to the different training camps and visiting teams, and we always would see the running backs working out and going through those gauntlet drills yep. and, you know, guys either slapping at the ball or the machines? you got to learn to take care of it. Yeah, they lost it there. Big fumble. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Cousins now after the fumble recovery. They'll get this underneath to Madison. And the tackle going to be made at the 38. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Play fake. Cousins. And he's got this to Jefferson. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A gain there of 21 yards. Second and short. That's a rundown. So it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling it. And they do so and pick up a first down. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. He will push his way down to about the 14. Rasul Douglas there to get him down. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there. All 11 guys on defense diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. On second down, this is Madison. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. From the gun, here's Cousins. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. It's a loss of 10 on the sack, and it leads to fourth. Well, it's about how teams are so competitively matched, and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal, that's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. Fourth down, field goal try coming, so Cousins is off, and on comes Greg Joseph for Minnesota. And Joseph's got it, and the Vikings have a 3-0 lead. So the defense are able to force their first turnover of the game, and then they add on to that by getting the field goal. And you don't just want to take the ball away from your opponent, partner. You want to make them hurt as well. And if you don't score yourself on defense, turn it over to your offense and have them put points on the board. Joseph now to kick this one away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. The Packers offense here coming back out for their second drive. They fumbled the last time they had the football. Fortunate that it only led to a field goal. 3-0 the score as they start first and 10. Do it. 
Love. And incomplete, he dropped it. Maybe a rookie mistake there, second down. Looked like they had an opportunity for a big play across the middle, but he didn't have the concentration of the focus necessary and dropped it before he could haul it in. Once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. Love going to give this one to Jones. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Give him 15 there, and the Packers have a first. Now that's how you start to get back in the good graces of your head coach. Remember, he fumbled on the last possession. How about the faith they showed him, giving him the ball again, and he repaid him, picking up a first down. After the run by Jones, here's first and ten. Throwing. Love. Forced out to his left. He's got a man. It's his tight end. That's complete. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two. Everyone has their strengths. Able to move to the right or their left, being able to throw the football. So that means you've got to work on both because you never know which way you're going to get flushed by pressure. In this situation, able to escape to his left and makes an accurate throw. To throw again on second down. Love eluding the pressure right. And that one going to come up short. Low throw. Oh, they'll certainly be on the tablets going over that one for sure. Clearly, they were expecting something else out of the defense and couldn't adjust to make that completion happen. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. They'll try and run for it with Jones. And they needed two. They could only get one. Fourth down. Fourth and short, partner. I mean, this would be a really risky call. Here we are in the first quarter. On They're your own side of the own field. On side of the field. But, boy, what a tone setter that would be to go for it and get it, wouldn't it? You're gritty today. I like I, it. I'm feeling it. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Pat O'Donnell, to kick it away. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. And the football going back to the Vikings offense. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. Cousins. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Now they may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. Here's Madison running on first down. And a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40-yard line. 13 yards as the Vikings pick up the first down. Interior of that line blocked really well on that run, but also the two tight ends, they blocked well too. Not only have they stouted the line of scrimmage, with their agility, they can get upfield and hit moving targets like linebackers, defensive backs. They do a really good job helping out the running game. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Going to run with Madison again. He'll work his way up the middle for a gain of about four. Second down. He'll get four yards on the carry there, and we will get to the end of the first quarter of play.
Three nothing after one on EA Sports. The Vikings with the football here to begin the second quarter as they are looking at a second down and six coming up. On the jet sweep, here comes Jefferson. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Well, they gave up a few yards there, but all in all, I think that's a pretty nice job defensively against the jet sweep. If they don't slow him up, he might take it to the house. So they'll take that play every time on the defensive side of the ball. The Vikings on third down, just one for three thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. Throw caught there by Osborne. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers 21. They only needed one yard on third down. They get 10 instead by going to the air. That's a play that'll likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now Cousins. Complete. Jefferson the target. And he gets it inside the ten to the nine. Twelve more yards there and another first down. Just picking up yardage in bunches here. These last few plays, they have moved right down the field. And just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. to throw Cousins this is caught and just shy of the goal line as he's out of bounds right at the one nice gain of eight that time but it's second and goal timing is everything and they work on this cut all the time they work on all the timing patterns and this time it paid off for them worked him to the center of the field cut it to the outside balls delivered gets both feet down for the completion Good yardage on first down. Now can they punch it in on second and goal? On play action, Cousins. And they're going to get to him, a sack. Sack back at the nine-yard line. The pressure from multiple guys there as they bury him for a big nine-yard loss. When you're this close to the goal line, you've got to expect pressure from the defense, so the ball's got to come out fast. Got to get out of his hands quicker. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Now Cousins. Buying time to his left. And he'll just throw this one over in the way of the security crew. Incomplete here. Another good drive, Charles, but it looks like another that might end in a field goal try. They've made some nice plays. They've given themselves opportunities, but as you noted, another field goal attempt coming up. And that's not how they want to end drives. They've got to figure out what's the final touch that they need to push it across the goal line. Yeah, still yet to find the end zone. The kick by Joseph is good. And they're able to double their lead in this first half. It's six to nothing. So a nice kick there as they add three to the lead. And from what I've seen so far, Brandon, I think they've been the better of the two teams here in the first half. So even though you want the touchdown, I think that's a nice job there to put three points on the board. Joseph now to kick this one away. Nixon now from his end zone. And all deep in his own territory, he coughs up the football. Go, 
Green Bay's offense ready to go again. They are still in search of their first points of the ball game, but only down 6 nothing as they begin with a first down. Love from the gun. And this one complete to Reed. And out of bounds across the 15-yard line. So just three yards on the completion there. And it'll be second down. Here's Love. He finds his man complete. That's Reed. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. To pass, here's Jordan Love. That'll be caught right side by Reed. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. to throw now here's love it's a short one here complete to his tight end and he'll be taken down but not before they work this to the 45 he's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage and that's what you have to do keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Play fake. Here's Love. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. Call it a gain of three on the play, and it's second down. I don't care what sport you're playing. Everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this, back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent game. Again, it's Love. On the out route, Dobbs brings it in. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness, there's a premium for all of that now. On third down, here's Jones. Just to pick up a three, but that is indeed enough. They had yet to run the ball at all on this drive, but third and short, definitely was a great time to dial one up. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Working out of the gun, Love. Nowhere to go here, he lost the football. A lot of bad news on that play for them, wasn't there? Lost the football, lost a lot of yardage, but I think the good news outweighs it, able to retain possession. That was big for them.
So they keep the ball, but work to do on second and long. Love looking to throw it. Setting up the screen here, Aaron Jones. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. Just a one-yard loss that time, but that's not what they needed. Now they're dealing with a third and long. Heck of a play there to get to him quickly and get him down for a loss. I think they did a really nice job getting ready for this game, scouting, watching film, and understanding defensively what the play design was. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Now Love. And Watson has it right side. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And the deficit will stay at two field goals. Well, Brandon, anything beyond 50, you start rolling the dice a bit. And once you get up around 57, 58 yards, the chances of making it go down dramatically. And sure enough, this one winds up no good. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. Now they're about to come up on drive number four, but so far just two field goals on drives one through three. Wondering if the head coach has talked with his offense coordinator and said, look, let's, let's go ahead and press this a little bit. I'm giving you four downs on just about every occasion to try and get this offense kick-started and have it culminate in touchdowns. You know, maybe someday to press it a little bit. This might be the case. They'll start on the ground with Madison. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. But well, we all know the guy carrying the ball is going to get the credit, both in the stat line and probably in the newspaper. But guess what? Those guys creating holes, they couldn't feel better about themselves right now. Offensive line, tight end, probably even the wide receivers are involved. They're moving the ball well. From just shy of midfield, Cousins. Packer pressure, and down he goes. Kenny Clark, what an effort from him on that play. Big tackle for a loss of 11. So that now four first-half sacks. This pass rush has been unrelenting. And, partner, you hear that sound of paper being ripped to shreds? That's a game plan that they've had so far because they've got to say to themselves right now, we have to do something differently. Cousins with work to do after the sack as he brings his guys up on a third and long. They'll set up a throw. This one brought in by Jefferson. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. We and we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Cousins to throw it. And this one is incomplete. He certainly had a good game throwing the ball so far, but I think he was trying to take that from good to great with that throw, trying to get one downfield. So line of scrimmage, still the 39 on second and 10. Throwing his Cousins. Open man, he's got him, the tight end, Hawkinson. And they'll work this down inside the 30. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. A third field goal of the first half, not what they're looking for as they come up on third down. 
Got a man, and he hits him in stride. Right, and he will have a Vikings first down, and he'll have it by plenty as they're able to keep the drive alive on third and inches. Did you see that run the way that I did? I yep. thought he was trying to get deep Yeah, that first. wasn't the first option. No, not until he came off of that guy, the deep guy, and came underneath on the drag, completed it very well. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Cousins now to throw on first down. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. Now another timeout called for by the offense as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. Looking to throw again on second down. Cousins. This goes out wide from Madison. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. I know it was a game, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay game. Got an open man finding Jefferson. And the Vikings are going to be set up with a first and goal as they get the conversion there on third and inches. Now a timeout called for by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. A kicker fest so far, all points via field goals. They're hoping to change that right here. They'll throw again, Cousins. And they're going to get to him, a sack. Sack back at the nine-yard line. With Sean Gary that time fighting free and getting to the quarterback. So a couple of field goals, that's all we've been able to muster through two quarters of play. 6-0 is our count at the break. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, let's run through the next-gen stats for the Vikings in that first half. And even though they've got a halftime lead, they're likely devising ways as we speak to try and get a little more production from their passing game. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Packers set to get the football first, and they are trailing on the scoreboard as we resume action. Ready for the third quarter. Fields it right around the goal line. And an extra turn sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Well, the Packers ready to go to start quarter number three. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. and They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. 
The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. Tackle made there by Jordan Hicks. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You can go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. Here's Jones again on second down. And he'll get two, maybe three, up near the 37. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Love with it here, third and short yardage. Throw right side, hauled in by Dobbs. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Third and four, he did just enough. And I mean just enough to move the chains. And that's all you're looking for, right? Just want to keep the drive moving. You don't need the big play there. Just get to that marker that you described, and he was able to do just that. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. The Love's throw brought in by Watson, and he's brought down. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and ten. Throwing. Love. A complete once again to Watson. And he's going to be taken down at about the 33. That's what it is. That's what it is, Throwing again on second down. Love. He's got the hookup with Dobbs. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They looked like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there are very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. Love now to pass on first down. His throw incomplete. What will look like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. To the air again, Love. Escaping the pressure right. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. And Daniil Hunter, he's the one who gets in there and brings him down to the ground. And just when the offense seemed to be figuring things out, they had a little bit of a setback there. Finally getting a drive going. They can't let that stop them, especially since they've been shut out this far in. Ninth play of the drive now on third and a country mile. Love now. Caught on the right side by Jones. They'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and it'll be fourth down. I really like the angles that the tacklers came from on that play. They secured inside, took away the cutback. 
The sideline's there, so you can only go so far outside. And they were able to close in and tackle him for a loss. Yeah, they used your boy over there, the 12th man. Sammy Sideline, right? Sammy Sideline, you know something? He tackles pretty well, too. He's tougher than an airport stake. Fourth down and no hesitation from Matt LaFleur as he sends out the field goal unit. From the right hash, this from 53. And his kick here is good. And they are on the board, trailing now at 6 to 3. So he missed that field goal earlier, but he says not this time. Able to knock it through, give his guys three. I like his poise. I like his confidence, his belief in himself. Sometimes when you miss that first one, you'll see a lot of guys sag, and they can't make the next one. Not in this case. Stepped right up like a pro. So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. Nuwangu now from his end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result had he opted for the touchback. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Going to begin the drive here with Madison. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. <laughs> I know we can't hear what's going on in that huddle right now, but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying, my bad, we simply couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. To throw, Cousins. Complete, Jefferson the target. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. 18 yards the gain for number 18. First down, here's Cousins. And this one right back into the hands of Jefferson. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10 as they're down to the 29-yard line. Here's Cousins. Throw left side taken in by Jefferson. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. Second and two. Cousins again. Right side, it's the tight end, Hawkinson. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14 before he's out of bounds. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver.
On the handoff, it's Madison. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Kenny Clark, the big D tackle there to make the stop. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. To Jefferson on the slant. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. So the completion results there in nine yards. And they'll be faced with a third and in inches. I think a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker. And you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry, ball gets tipped in the air. Because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. They're going for it. Here's Madison. Oh, and I think he went backward. He did. They'll get neither the touchdown nor the first down. And it'll be a turnover on downs. And you wonder, Charles, could that decision come back to haunt them later? And it really could, because in this situation, you kick the field goal in a tight game like this, that's a good play. Yeah. But maybe what he's saying to himself is, I'm just not a big proponent of the old idea that any possession that ends in a kick, I'm happy with. He wanted to be really aggressive. A little twist here in the third quarter. They'll begin the drive with a run by Dillon. And he will take this up to about the eight-yard line. A gain of three, second down. And that's frustrating for a defense because they've got them pinned down deep. And on the first play, they gave up a run that keeps an offense on schedule. Yeah, because three to four yards, that's all you're looking for right there, right? That's absolutely perfect, really, as a play call. You get three to four yards on first down, that's what they talk about us all the time, about being ahead of the chains or on target, ahead of schedule. They were after that run. And he'll take this one up to about the 13. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle. And oftentimes, we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive alive. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take it the distance, but a short yardage trying to pick up first downs. That big guy, always oh, a nice luxury to have, isn't he? Switching things up, they'll throw it now with Jordan Love. Flushed out right. Daniil Hunter able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Even the most elusive quarterbacks have those tough days where they can't avoid sacks, and this is one of them. Third time he's gone down, he might develop some happy feet now, want to escape the pocket and try and gain more yardage with his legs. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. On the counter, here's Jones. And he was very fortunate there to get out of his end zone. He maybe got back to the two-yard line. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. Come on, let's go! Let's dominate this! Let's go! Let's 
Love with a give to Dillon. And not much there as he gets it up to about the five-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It's fourth down. We often talk of situational football. Let's just call it team football. The defense did their job, got off the field, brought up a punting situation, so they're turning the ball back over to their offense. You think those guys would get along very well right now? Of course they will. Defense helped the offense. Now it's their turn to take it downfield. A beautiful fake. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Lambeau. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And they've got some stuff to build on from that last drive because they moved the football CD and then they tried to go for it on fourth down, didn't convert, probably left a bitter taste in their mouths. I would say so, and I think that they go out in this series determined for that not to happen again. In fact, they don't even want to get to a fourth down opportunity. They just want to make sure they get it done within the parameters that they've set for themselves. Run their offense, get it into the end zone. Yeah, I think a little bit of determination and a dash of anger. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Cousins. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Now a give to Madison. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. From the 40 now on second down, Cousins, middle of the field to Jefferson. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. And that last reception puts him over 150 yards now on the game, Charles. And now it's not just execution. It's not just performance. It's a mental aspect that's going on. Because right now, he's got the defense so much on their heels. Got them looking at each other. Who's going to cover this guy? And what type of coverage can we put out there to try and slow him down? Going on the ground with Madison. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back. Those are the ones you focus on and want to take away, and they've done that pretty successfully. Here's Madison getting it again on second. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. Trailing in the fourth, this close of a game, that's a penalty you just can't afford. It's an absolute killer, and it's one that drives coaches and teammates insane. So the face mask moves him closer, and now first and goal. Madison going to take this down just short of the goal line. He got three, but could not get the ball over the chalk. 
And that gets him three yards closer here as it brings up second and goal. It is definitely hard to find space near the goal line. You always want to have a guy in the game running it who can create his own. This drive's taken more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. They'll try to run with Madison. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. And now third and goal coming up, the loss on second down. That just means this crowd's going to get even louder, and they'll get a little bit of extra help from the defenders as they exhort them to join them in the effort. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. They'll try to get it on the ground with Madison. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. That'll back him up two yards and also bring up fourth. And in this situation, a field goal doesn't help you a whole lot, but I think you've got to take it because I think you're a little too far back to go for it on fourth down. But we also know the offensive coordinator's in the head coach's ear trying to talk him into going for it right here. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to swell the lead to six. They pass up the three, fake it, it doesn't work. And the Packer defense stands tall down by the goal line. I remember being taught that cliches have become so for a reason. A lot of times they're true, right? What's that they used to tell us about letting sleeping dogs lie? Well, this one wasn't sleeping, maybe it was just slumbering a little bit. But taking that gamble there, you've got the lead. You may have ignited them now that they stopped you. That's exactly right. If you take the points here, you don't shift momentum necessarily on that play. You probably just did. They'll start out here with a jet sweep. And a short pickup here as he'll get across the 10 to the 11-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. But defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. On second down, it's Jones. And able to find a little space, he gets this up over the 15 to the 16. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. I really like the vision he displayed on that play because he saw there wasn't a lane to completely break off a huge gain, so he found where there was the most space and got what he could. A nice, dirty run that's a positive play for the offense. They'll go again to Jones, and he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. Now a first down carry by Jones. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. This run defense has been pretty stout all game long. Now you're here in the fourth quarter. Let's rely more on the passing attack. I don't think you have any choice, and I don't think you have to dress it up at all either. Throughout the first three quarters, you're still trying to convince the defense that you may run the football. That's out the window right now. Protect, let your quarterback operate, and try and find some targets in the open field downfield. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Well, in tapping those toes, he tried to get both in bounds. He could not do it, though. In tap dance parlance, could not complete the shuffle. All right, needed to get that shuffle down with both <laughs> feet, not just one. Is that what they say? There it is. You know, put a little sand down on the stage. 
And now the rookie's free. 20. Touchdown, Packers. A big play there. An 80-yard touchdown. And the Packers use the defensive breakdown to take the lead away here in the fourth. For as big and strong as some of these guys are, especially when you see them in full pads, it is sometimes hard to appreciate how truly fast they can move. That was incredible. Well, in this league where coordinators worry so much about drawing up the right routes, blocking assignments, misdirections and stuff, they have these precise arrows and movements. Sometimes the best plays just come from the schoolyard where you look at your fastest guy and say, Go long. Go get it, big man. And if you're wondering how fast he was going, Next Gen Stats clocked him at close to 21 miles an hour. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Nuwangu now from his end zone. And he returns this to the 22. Justin Jefferson and the rest of this offense, they've got their helmets back on and they're ready for this next series. Seems like the measuring stick for a receiver for a great game is 100 yards. Well, he's well past that now. And as we analyze how he's getting him, that's where it really becomes fun because, let's face it, they keep sending coverage at him, keep trying to put the pressure on, yet he finds ways downfield and finds openings. That's a really crafty receiver. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 22. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple at its second down. Boy, how good has this defense been seemingly all game long? I really think right from the first snap, I think you're really onto something there in this passing game. It just can't get off the ground. In that play, it wound up losing yardage. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. Cousins. Oh, and a bad throw there. It's intercepted. Picked by Tarverius Moore. And the Packers are going to take possession of the football. Well, this had trouble written all over from the start. He's got two extra defensive backs in the game he's got to deal with. They're in a dime set. So everywhere he's looking, he's seeing a different color jersey. And sure enough, this one winds up being intercepted. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. Another important fourth quarter series coming up. That last INT helping to maintain their slim advantage. Following the interception, Love. Jones has it. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. Now Love. And this one too low. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. Let's go, baby. Let's go, y'all. Let's go. This a big play for both sides. What will we see here? Third and four. Love going to give this one to Jones. Oh, he shifts past him. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about.
Well, things obviously not going their way. Trailing here in the fourth quarter, and that penalty going to go ahead and give the other side some extra yardage. We all know it's an intense game, and things can get heated out there. That's part of the battle. But bottom line, you got to keep your cool. That was not an example of doing that. Now they'll line up to kick the extra point. It's good, and now it's an 11-point lead, 17-6. to six. They had the short field, and they made quick work of it. Just two plays to get into the end zone. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Taking it at about the one. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Minnesota's offense takes over possession, and the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 22. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Well, they certainly gave it an attempt. They had a diminutive receiver like this running through the land of Giants in the middle of the field, but they couldn't find enough room to get him the football. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Now Cousins. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by Jair Alexander, and the Packers are going to take possession of the football. But here in the fourth quarter, defensively, you know that you're just going to blanket the field with defensive backs and say, OK, take your best shot. And that time, it's intercepted. And we've often seen teams go into the prevent early, way too early. And sometimes they get too soft in their coverages. But not in this case. They understood the situation and played it with the proper aggression. Suddenly, it's first and goal after the interception. A quick change in the situation here. A little jet sweep to start the drive. It's a good pickup of seven yards, and now they're looking at second and goal. I know that every now and then we get in those meetings with coaches, and you almost want to roll your eyes when they talk about staying on schedule when they're moving the football. But would you say a seven-yard run is ahead of schedule? Fourth quarter with the lead, you love that, don't you? No doubt about it, because staying on schedule is trying to get four downs on first down. They did that plus three. So it's Packer football here as we welcome you back. They've got a second and goal now as they look to add a few more points here onto their total. They'll try and run it in with Jones. And he'll take this one in for a Packer touchdown. Aaron Jones, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Packers tack on another score as they have dominated this fourth quarter. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. Now for the point after. And the lead is up to 18 now. Well, that drive started with not a whole lot of real estate in front of them. In plus territory, excellent field position. Two plays later, pay dirt.
Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And now out comes Minnesota. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that, and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team, and we were losing late in the game like this, and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And a coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build Just on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. On second and inches, Cousins toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. And that one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit is going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth, but a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where his coaches. You're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. Again, it's Cousins. And the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Cousins with work to do after the sack as he brings his guys up on a third and long. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Looking downfield, and that's caught right side. He's got his man. And he's going to be out of bounds all the way down inside the 15. A big play there for Minnesota. 42 yards. At this stage, there's nothing left to do but to keep firing. And if you're a play caller, you may go off your sheet and use some things maybe you hadn't planned to in this game. Maybe that was one of them there that worked. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. From the red zone now, Cousins to the right side and complete to Jefferson. And he's going to be marked down just outside the 10. And now they're in the hurry up. To throw again on second down. Cousins. Another one on this play for Justin Jefferson. And the Vikings are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. To throw his cousins. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. From three yards out. And the Vikings are finally into the end zone here in this fourth quarter. And yeah, that touchdown counts for their team. But I think it counts more for the fantasy guys, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just something maybe positive to look at on film. But this one's over, let's be honest. Yeah, I, th I agree with you totally on that one. Joseph connects on the extra point, and that makes it 
So time definitely not in their favor. Down two scores, but they'll try the onside kick. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a camper on this one. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. The Packers offense now. They get ready to head back onto the field. And this one all over but the shouting, you might say. Now, there's one timeout remaining defensively, but probably no real need to use it here. Yeah, the only time they would use it, strictly for pride. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. The Packers looking to get out of here with a win as they take the knee. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in the game. Down to a knee goes love, and that should be the final act of this football game. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. Well, somebody lit a fire under that offense during the break, Charles. Remember, they trailed an intermission. They come out, they have the big second half, and that lifts them to the victory. And Brandon, trailing at halftime, we always talk about teams making adjustments. You know what the best adjustments usually are? It's just executing better. Because the game plan you put in place at the beginning of the week often still holds. You don't have to make wholesale changes. You just have to do it a little bit better, a little cleaner. And they did that in the second half, and that led them to victory.